the latest on the mystery surrounding Prince's death. The U.S. Attorney's Office and DEA are now joining the investigation as we learn more about a California doctor who says he was called to help a superstar with an addiction problem. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has a story. This is what it sounds like when the doves cry. This morning, new details about the morning Prince was found dead in his Paisley Park estate. ABC affiliate KSTP confirming with law enforcement sources close to the investigation that the painkiller Percocet was indeed found in Prince's system. This, as ABC News learns, the singer's inner circle was trying to get him help for what they believe was an addiction to painkillers. The night before he died, they Here's called Dr. Howard Kornfeld. I've been treating chronic pain conditions. Kornfeld, who runs a California clinic and is an expert in pain medication addiction, immediately set into place a plan for what his lawyer refers to as a life life-saving mission. Did Prince know about the intervention? Yes. Kornfeld's lawyer says he couldn't meet Prince until Friday. Instead, immediately rushing his son Andrew, a pre-med student who works at his clinic, on a red eye to Minneapolis. The family's lawyer saying Andrew was the one to call 911 after he and two of Prince's staffers found his body. The hope was to get him stabilized in Minnesota and convince him to come to Recovery Without Walls in Mill Valley. According to the Cornfields lawyer, Andrew was carrying with him buprenorphine, a drug used to help deal with addiction withdrawal. The plan was to give the medicine to a local doctor who was supposed to see Prince later the same morning, but the medicine was never used. What's unclear is why treatment wasn't sought closer to home. The premier addiction treatment center in the United States is four miles from Paisley Park. Whenever addicts and particularly celebrity addicts get special care, the outcomes are substandard. The standard of care is the standard for the reason. When you mess with that, bad outcomes. This morning, the DEA and the U.S. Attorney General's Office helping local authorities as they try to figure out how Prince got prescriptions for painkillers and if he died of an overdose. For Good Morning America, Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, Chanhassen, Minnesota. Our thanks to Eva. ABC's chief legal analyst Dan Abrams joins us now. So let's pick up on what Eva reported about the doctor and sending his pre-med son out to Minnesota. They have retained a lawyer. They're very public about all this. What is the legal matter Yes, here? so the lawyer's saying the reason I'm here basically is we were told that there was some sort of criminal investigation and we don't know all the facts, etc. The only thing I can think of based on what we know today is the son carrying uh, the drug. Uh, why was why was he there with it? He's not a doctor, etc. I don't see that becoming much of an issue in and of itself. Uh, their claim is that they were bringing he was bringing it so that he could give it to a doctor who was going to be treating Prince the next day. It doesn't seem to me that that's a big thing to investigate. But when you get in these high-profile cases, they want to cover all of the bases on something like this. So I'm not surprised, A, that they're saying that there's an investigation. I'm not surprised, B, that they've got a lawyer uh, representing them. Right. But uh, don't necessarily expect any criminal charges. So you don't think there are any kind of legal jeopardy there. Could anybody, though? Well, that's the, that's the question, right? When you talk about cases where there's possible overdose, every doctor whoever prescribed Prince with any kind of controlled substance has got to be nervous right now. In a high profile case, they're going to be looking at anyone and everyone. So that's where I think that there could be potential legal jeopardy. And then you have the feds, you have the DEA, you have the FBI. Is yeah, that which is interesting. You've got to think that it has something to do with either that flight, uh, that emergency flight that landed in Illinois the week before, crossing state lines, FAA issues. Um, you know, those are the sorts of things that I think that the feds would be looking at. All right, Dan, thank you.